This video is second in the series on how we can adjust the visualizations in our reports for improved readability. Basically, how could we organize the data and present the data in a way that makes it easy for the reader to digest? Now, in this specific case, we're going to take a closer look at the donut chart. I see the donut chart as an elegant version of the pie chart. But as elegant as it may be, it's still not as effective as something so simple as a sorted bar chart to convey the same information. Now, the best part is that this chart is super easy to make. In this case, I've done an automatic sorting of the chart. So if the numbers change, the sort order automatically changes. But if this is something that you need once a year, you can also manually sort this using the sort feature in Excel. If this is something that you use often, you'd want Excel to do the sorting for you. So if you're interested to find out how, keep watching. First off, let's think about what's the message of this report. We were looking at the key markets, basically the key geographical areas as a percentage of sales volume. And here we can see a lot of countries grouped in the other category. Now we're going to visualize this with a sorted bar chart. Now you might be wondering, why are we sorting this? And we didn't sort the bar chart that we looked at in the last video, which was the first in the series. So in case you missed that, I'm going to put a link to it in the descriptions below. I'm just going to show you the chart that we created last. It looked at the sales volume by each mini model. And in this case, we didn't sort it. And the reason I didn't do that was because I think BMW has a special way of looking at their models and it's always in this way. So sorting this automatically might end up confusing people who are used to reading the reports that have this sort order. So if you're wondering if you should sort things or not, just think about if there isn't anything that's fixed in your organization, it makes sense to automatically sort things. But if you have categories that are fixed and everyone is used to looking at them in that sort order, you probably don't want to automatically sort these. Now here I've input the data in Excel cells and I'm assuming that the data doesn't originally come sorted. So first is the category, the country of origin, then is the European countries, America and so on, and other is last. To create a sorted bar chart on this data, what I could do is go here and manually sort this and create a bar chart that's based on this. But we wanna keep things interesting and we want Excel to do the sorting for us. We don't always want to remember, okay, did we go here? Did we sort? Because maybe the order of these countries, they're close together, maybe that order changes. It does make sense to put in some upfront work to have it ready for the next times you need to use this report. I'll show you how we can set this up dynamically, and at the end of the video, I'll show you how we can sort this manually. What we need to achieve here is to create a data preparation table right here that gives us this exact same information sorted. Notice that I've formatted other differently here because I want to keep other in the last position no matter what. It doesn't make sense at all to put other somewhere in the middle. Everything else I want sorted. And once I create my graph, I'm going to have the graph reference this sorted data preparation table. And because this is going to be connected to this, every time this information changes, this changes and the chart changes. Right here, I'm going to add data prep. And first off, I want to get the rank. The rank function is great for getting the information of who's number one, number two, number three. And you can do this in ascending or descending order. In this case, I want descending because ultimately I want number one to be shown first and then number two and so on. Let's look at the rank function. It's a very simple function. All we need to have is the number that we want ranked. So it's this one. The reference, what should you compare it to? So that's the numbers that we wanted to compare it to. And I'm excluding other in this case. And I need to fix it with the F4 key. 
The last argument for rank is if we want descending or ascending. By default, it is descending, so I can leave out that argument. And I'm going to pull this down. Right now, I can see number one is China, number two is US, Germany number three, and so on. Okay, so this is going to be the key for me to find out which one comes as number one and which one is going to be number two and so on. So to keep things simple, I'm just going to manually add in the numbering for this. Okay, so I want number one to be shown here, number two here, and so on. And number eight is actually going to be the other category here. So that I can already fix. Okay, but right here I want to have the country that is number one. Which one is that? China. And right here I want the value that's associated with China and that's going to be 20.6. How do I get country here automatically? I already have all the information I want. I know that I want the number one country here. I can find which one is number one from here because this is in line with this information. A great function for this is the index a match functions, my favorite function. The first argument in index is where our answer is. So array equals answer. Our answer is a country, so we only highlight the countries. Now I'm excluding other because that cannot be an answer. Now I need to fix this with F4. The next argument is to figure out how many rows I want to go down, and that's going to be who is number one. So I can use the match function. What am I looking up? Number one, right? But when I drag this down, I want number two, and then down I want number three. So here I put in the indexes for simplicity, but you can also use the row function instead of the indexes. So I'm going to click this. Where am I looking this up? In here. So that's my rank. I have to make sure I have the exact same height as my index area. I'm going to fix it. And as the last argument, I'm looking for an exact match. The next argument for index is the column, but I just have one column. I don't need that argument. Okay, so that's my countries. Now for value, the exact same thing. I'm just going to copy this, press escape, and paste it here. All I need to change is what? My index range. Okay, that's it. So this is the data preparation table that I can use to create my charts. I'm just going to highlight this differently. And now I'm going to create a bar chart based on this. I'm just going to highlight this. Go to insert bar chart. Now again, the order is the other way around. So I have other here on top and then Japan. I want to switch it around. I'm going to click on the axis. Let's double click to bring up the options from axis options right here. I'm going to tick mark categories in reverse order. Now I'm going to add in the data labels, remove the axis here, remove the grid lines, and bring these series a bit closer together. So I'm going to reduce the gap width to, let's go 70%. Now let's take a look at the color. What they've done here is that the first one, the first category is the darkest, then the last one is the lightest. And we could do that in Excel. If we go to the series fill options, I clicked on the series first, go to fill options. We have an option here that says vary colors by point. And when I do that, it takes automatically my office theme color, which if we go to page layout, we can see is this one, right? And if I go to customize color, I can see here that's the first color that's used in the series, second color, and so on. I don't want this report to be so colorful. 
like this. So what I could do is to go in and change the theme color, but if I do that, that's going to impact all the other charts that I have in this report. I could also fix the color of each one myself separately. So I could double click on the first series and change the color of that first series. I'm going to my quick access toolbar, but I'll show you, I'll go to the format tab here. I can change the color of the first one to the color that I want, the darkest, and then go to the second one and change that to a gray that's a bit lighter and so on. But what you also have is under design, you have the change colors option here. And what Excel does is that for each of these office colors, it gives you a monochromatic version of each of them. And there is the gray one here because there's gray in here. And if I choose this option, that's the closest to this. Now the rest of this report is just formatting. So I can take away the borders of this by going to format, shape outline, no outline. I can actually remove the title and use the same title that they have here and just format it in a nice way. This way it's very easy to compare the size of each of the countries with one another and we can see the value associated with each country right in front of it so that we don't have to think how much bigger is this in comparison to this. And then to look down here and look back here, we have all the information right here with just one glance. Now the only thing to take care of when you create this is to make sure that you account for duplicate ranks. What happens if two of these countries end up with the exact same percentage, with the same number? Let's say that France and Italy happen to be exactly 3.5. Okay, obviously this has to add up to 100, but let's just assume two of them have the exact same number. Look, we get a problem in our data preparation because what happened here? There is no number six. There are two number fives, no number six. And let's take a look at our graph. We have a problem. Our data preparation results in an error. Our graph results in an error. And to account for this, it's always the safest that you make sure you have the right formula that accounts for these duplicates. I use the count if function. With the count if, I basically ask Excel how many times has this number occurred until now in this data set. And then I make an adjustment to the original rank value that Excel provides me. The first argument in count if is the range. And the range is going to be this value to itself. Okay, but I'm going to fix the first cell reference so that when I pull this down, my range expands. And my criteria is this value. The result of my count if in this case, if I press F9, so I'm going to highlight this and press F9, is 1. Because this number has occurred 1 time until now. So that's going to add a 1 to the original rank, which I don't want. So I'm going to reverse out by typing in a minus 1 here. So I get back the original rank. But now let's just take a look at this. See that turned into a 5 and a 6. Why is it a 6 in here and not a 5? Because it counted how many times did 3.5 occur in this data range. It occurred two times and it's going to minus a 1 so that we get a unique rank. I'm just going to pull this down to the end. That makes sure that we don't run into problems when we have numbers that are identical to one another, so that Italy now is plotted right below France. Now, as a last step, I told you at the beginning of the video that I'm going to show you how you can manually sort this yourself. So if this is something that you don't need to do that often, it's very simple. You just have to highlight this area, excluding the other here, right mouse click and sort largest to smallest. Based on this, we can create this chart here. Okay, so the advantage of setting this up is that you don't have to go here every time and right mouse click and sort. 
let's be honest, if you're under stress, you could forget to do this. So if this is something that you use a lot, it makes sense to just take a few minutes and set this up so that Excel does the sorting for you, no matter how the data come in. Now let's take a look at these two graphs side by side. Which one do you think is easier to read? If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. In the next video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at Excel tables and how we can optimize the presentation of tables in reports. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, consider subscribing.